What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Um, I wanted to make a statement on, I think one of the things that the devil is trying to do is make us doubt that evil exists. Um, or just forget, you know, there is a passage in the Bible that clearly says that as Christians, we can sort of forget that we were sinners. Or as Christians, we can sort of forget that God cleansed us in that we go back to, you know, um, sin and go back to, you know, uh, doing wrong. But I wanted to take the perspective of knowing that evil exists, I think, um, is helpful just to do a lot of things. I think, um, you know, we can sort of have the wrong idea about the world that we live in. Um, you know, I, I think this is so important in regards to, um, you know, even things that we hear on the news or doubt. Um, I've, you know, someone I know on my channel was sort of doubting whether, uh, you know, October 7th happened in Israel. Well, I think, you know, that one of the things that person is sort of dealing with is sort of doubting if evil exists or doubting, you know, I wouldn't say real evil. You know, the Bible gives some indication that, you know, people um, don't necessarily know real evil, even though I think many people do a lot of evil things that are definitely, you know, a big measure of evil. But I, you know, don't have the verse right in front of me. But, you know, there is a verse that, you know, sort of says that, you know, uh, we don't really know the full measure of both goodness and evil here on this world. But still, we do know enough to be judged or, you know, to be condemned for the evil that we do do. Uh, and also, you know, um, and I said do twice there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, also, I think one thing we shouldn't do, though, is, you know, minimize the wrong sinful things that people do as well. And so I think that's one of the things in studying whether evil exists or not is because I think we can also minimize, you know, the sinfulness of ourself and the th wrong things that we do, but also the sinfulness of just the world that we live in. And, you know, we can sort of have these ideas that, you know, oh, you know, there's a bit of goodness in everyone or, you know, uh, everyone has a little bit of, you know, niceness in them. When, you know, the Bible doesn't really say that, even though it does say that all people were made upright. But, you know, at the same time, it says that many people have gone astray. And so. One of the ways that I think we can sort of, you know, conquer this doubt that I think we can have in regards to evil and, you know, the sinfulness of humans and also the sinfulness of just those that are in rebellion against God, you know, a.k.a., you know, the demons and, you know, Satan who exist invisibly, you know, they, they aren't visible to our natural eye. Um, you know, believing the Bible, that's, you know, that's the go to. I think, you know, when we hear what the Bible says about evil if we have some sort of thing in our mindset about, you know, oh, you know, I don't know if people are actually evil or, you know, I don't know if, you know, uh, this one thing that I heard in the news happened, you know, that's like too crazy to happen. Well, you know, when you look at all that the Bible says, you know, clearly there are things that, you know, plenty of examples that the I think the Bible touches on, you know, a lot of different sins, you know, uh, many different sins. Um, but at the same time, you know, um, I don't think the Bible goes into detail about different sins. Um, I think that's very clear. And it's kind of interesting 
you know, kind of quirky funny in a way or weird funny when people try to ban the Bible because they're like, you know, trying to use some false argument that, you know, oh, you know, uh, the Bible is explicit, you know, and they're trying to use that argument to say, hey, let's take it out of schools and out of libraries because, you know, the 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 Bible's explicit when, you know, the Bible doesn't really go into a lot of detail about the sins that people do. And I think that's why, you know, it takes some study to really know, you know, whether what you are doing is sinful because also there is a word barrier. You know, um, there is, you know, a word barrier in that Many of the words that you can find maybe in the KJV or the New King James Version are, I think, foreign words where you don't naturally know the definition of that word. And I know that happened to me when I was younger before I actually looked up a lot of words is, you know, wow, you know, I hear this word, you know, and, you know, I don't really know what it means, even though. I think a lot of words, obviously, you know, as they teach us in school that, you know, you can uh, get the meaning of words when it's used in a sentence or used in a certain context, you know, and obviously that that works, too. But nevertheless, you know, um, there are things that I believe are going on in the world that, you know, I want to take the standpoint of Adam and Eve, you know, when they were you know sinning in the garden they hid they hid in the the bushes you know they hid in the bushes and you know god knew where they were just like today is you know god knows you know uh his eyes behold both the evil and the good but yet you know um that didn't change the position of adam and eve Now, I don't think it's necessarily wrong always to hide. I mean, I think it is sort of a courtesy, you know, in a kind of a strange way for the wicked. I think it's sort of a courtesy for the wicked to hide what they're doing, you know, in some sort of strange way, you know, because they know that, you know, hey, if this is out and about, you know, it would most likely be frowned upon, you know, and I just, you know, released an episode, uh, the other day about how, you know, the wicked devour each other. But, um, anyway, um, one thing I think that we need to do to combat our own sin, you know, and of course what we're called to do as Jesus followers is to help people come into the light instead of hiding, you know, and I don't, I think it is sort of a mistake though, to say that the wicked are afraid. And so that's why they hide. They're afraid to do what they're doing out in the open, you know, and you know, they're really not that tough or big and bad if they don't do it in public. I don't think that's true because I think it's just another strategy that is used, not necessarily they are afraid to do what they do, you know, in public. I think it's just sort of, you know, a strategy to continue doing what they're doing. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I think can be helpful is turning to Jesus I think we all need to turn to Jesus and say, you know, hey, Jesus, you know, hey, I'm caught, you know, you caught me type of thing. Like, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to go ahead and turn myself in rather than it. It always looks better to sort of admit something. You know, you hear different stories about when someone commits a crime in the news and you see you hear that, oh, you know, this person turned themselves into the police station. You know, I don't know how often that happens, you know, but nevertheless, you know, it does happen sometimes. And so I think one thing we need to do with God, instead of having him search for us, or obviously God is everywhere in in some sense, but, you know, 
we need to sort of go to Jesus, you know, as Christians, you know, not really talking about unbelievers here because, you know, they're on their own path. You know, obviously, I wouldn't really preach to unbelievers. Uh, I'm not really into that all the time because, you know, there's some things that people just naturally know, you know, that they shouldn't do or they need to turn to Jesus. And we're sort of like in the last days. So I think a lot of this is sort of really easy to see these days. But as Christians, you know, when we do something wrong, we don't we shouldn't want to hide it, even though I think all of us hide something, you know, some part of it. But I think definitely, you know, when you say you are doing something wrong, definitely using that, you know, um, word for what it's described as saying, hey, you know, I did this or I did that. Maybe taking the stance of the Bible where you don't need to go into all the details where you're like disturbing someone with, you know, kind of your story. Because I know that I've been to different, you know, groups where they're meeting and, you know, they're talking and it's a Christian group. And sometimes, you know, hearing someone's testimony even though it is great to hear someone's testimony or it's great to hear, you know, how God is working in someone's life. But sometimes it can be disturbing hearing some of the things that people may have done or have gone through. And so I think definitely, you know, not, um, taking the opposite stance of the Bible and saying, you know, hey, I'm going to share, you know, all the details about this sin. And you're sort of, I don't know, like teaching someone, you know, as you talk. No, you know, I think definitely, though, there is, you know, that answer to your struggle in coming into the light and, you know, talking about it and, you know, definitely telling, you know, everyone what, you know, God already knows. You know, I think sometimes, you know, we can sort of, um, you know, think that, you know, oh, you know, this thing will stay hidden as long as I hide it. But, you know, the funny thing is Jesus has already told, you know, told us in scriptures that that is not true eventually someone's going to find out if it's either your spouse if it's your kids if it's your kids telling the story jesus has already told us how things are going to work from now on and so i know that people can doubt you know hey this is going to be hidden for forever but this is why we hear all these different stories in the news this is why we hear all the different ways of people doing wrong is because when Jesus died on the cross, things changed and, you know, now things are exposed. It could be, you know, a message popping up on your phone that someone sees. It could be, you know, um, something exposed to multiple, you know, big, um, a bigger group. And so one of the things that we should do is just say, you know, okay, I'm going to go to Jesus with this particular issue rather than, you know, continue to hide. Now, I do get that some things are sort of, you know, harder to talk about. And I think that's why you can meet with someone that you're not necessarily buddy buddy with, but like a pastor, even going to a a church that is not necessarily your home church. But going to a church that, you know, is, is you know, a church that you can sort of um, talk to someone in person if you want. Or I know a lot of churches do live chats. I know during the pandemic, there were, um, you know, a few churches that, you know, did a sort of, they did a sort of... Uh, you know, chat room type of thing where you can talk with the pastor or talk with the youth, youth, you know, leader 
you know, for us young people, you know, I'm 31. I'm, I think when I did this, I was like, I don't know, 20, 25 or so where, you know, I wanted to talk to a youth pastor type of thing. And so, you know, maybe if you're listening to this, you know, you're older, you know, I, I know some of my ministry is mostly geared towards kind of the younger crowd type of thing, but you know, uh, not really though. I don't really set a age limit, but anyway, um, I think that one thing that we can do is sort of, uh, come into the light and, and, you know, tell God what we're going through. And I think as we do it, you know, I think it, you know, is easier to confess sins, you know, especially sins. I know that when I've confessed, you know, oh, you know, I'm, uh, drank too much alcohol or something. Not that we should be proud about it or something. It's not proud, but, you know, it's just, you know, because scripture tells us that we shouldn't necessarily be talking about sins, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so, uh, uh, not ashamed of this particular thing. No, but at the same time, you know, having that go to, to, you know, uh, talk to someone and get help with the things that you may be facing. And so anyway, um, thanks so much for checking out this particular podcast. Hopefully this was helpful to someone. Um, I think one thing that we can also know, you know, when deciphering, you know, Jesus wanted us to know, you know, how to tell the difference between a sheep and a wolf, you know, and definitely knowing who's a Christian and who's not. There are many things that just a non-believer is never going to do, you know, uh, even though they can sort of blend in at church or something. We have to know, you know, what a Christian looks like and, you know, know what the details are about, you know, certain things that an unbeliever is never going to do, you know. And um, and so thanks so much for checking this out. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.